right now. Denver police need your help finding this missing senior. Edward Foley was last seen last night around South Oneida Way and West Evans Avenue. He has dementia and Alzheimer's. Police say Foley was last seen wearing a black jacket and sweatpants. If you've seen him, please call police. And this morning we're following a developing story in Aurora. Right now, police are looking for at least two suspects after a shootout near the Del Mar Park area. Nine News reporter Darius Johnson joins us now from where it happened overnight. And Darius, they still haven't found these guys, right? In the last 30 minutes, a shelter in place was lifted for those who live just west of Aurora High School. And that's nearly nine hours after this wild and chaotic scene played out right here at this intersection last night, still continuing this morning as the investigation continues right here behind me. You can see 6th and Peoria is still closed right now. That's due to the police investigation, and that's also due to the incident that took place last night. Aurora police says at least two suspects fired multiple rounds at officers. No officers were hit, but for Four patrol call cars were damaged in the shootout. Take a look at this video. Police say it all began around 945 last night when they started following a stolen car with two people inside. Once they pulled into this parking lot, police say the suspect started firing multiple rounds from the from inside the car. Officers returned fire. The suspects then tried to get away, but were met by more officers. The suspects shot at them as well before driving off. Police say they later found that stolen car at East 10th and Lima after it had crashed. Now near that scene, police tell us that they found someone under the age of 18 and arrested them on active warrants, but they aren't really sure what their involvement may be in relation to this shootout. Right now, police are still searching for those suspects and they are also asking you for your help. Anyone that lives in that 10th and Lima area who has any exterior cameras, they want you to look at those cameras between 945 last night and 11 last night to see if there's anything that could be of assistance in their investigation and hand it over to them. I will tell you that a total of five officers fired their weapons. All five of those officers are on administrative leave this morning. We're going to continue to follow this and try to gather the latest. But again, six in Peoria remains closed and there is still a lot of police right here in this parking lot. One is even standing right next to me right now. Yeah, Darius, certainly a crazy story. Like you said, thank you so much for breaking that down. Also developing this morning, a widow is suing one of Colorado's health care systems, saying it's to blame for her husband's death. He died in Pueblo after four security guards took him to the ground and restrained him. 90s reporter John Glasgow joins us once again. And John, the guards at one point faced criminal charges, but not anymore. Right, Gary, that has to do with the death of Matthew Jones. An autopsy found that he lost oxygen to his brain and then died. The coroner also cited his weight and found meth in his system as well. So the district attorney believed that there wasn't enough evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the security guards at Centurion Health were responsible for his death. So we've obtained video of what happened at St. Mary Corwin Hospital in the spring of last year. Jones was waiting for a ride home after being seen at the hospital. At some point, security tried to get him out the front door before taking him to the ground. For minutes, they held him prone, face down. He stopped breathing. Jones was revived, but he died a week later. Now his widow and her attorney want some answers. So Jones's family, they have filed a wrongful death lawsuit in Arapahoe County. That's where the parent company of Centura Health is based. Centura Health sent out a written statement saying in part, they wanted to extend its deepest condolences to the family, adding that they couldn't say anything else due to the pending litigation and the confidentiality issues. The legal team representing Jones family, they say that the hospital is responsible for his death and this is all going to play out in court. Now, this is another example of what Chris Vanderveen, our investigative reporter here at Nine News, has been looking into for more than a year or so. Yeah. Uh, he's been looking at and finding all these different cases that were before and after George Floyd had died, where law enforcement have ignored these uh, warnings that this yeah. prone position can potentially have fatal consequences. And we have seen that. And this is just another example of what has happened. That's why we're on this case. We want to find out exactly what happens out with this lawsuit as well, because this is happening far too often across the country. Dangerous, that's for sure, that prone position when they hold him yeah. down to the ground. So many questions here. Yeah. Right. Uh, one is, uh, what was he doing? I mean, mm -hmm. it looked like he was just standing there. We don't know what he was doing. That's exactly right. And I mean, we have that video, but a lot of it uh, doesn't show what happened prior to those security guards uh, 
detaining him, bringing him down to the ground, and then having him in that prone position. Uh, it was suggested by the hospital that there was some disruption with him. He was seen by the hospital team, then he was waiting for that ride, but in that time period, he may have been disruptive. They alleged that he pulled a phone cord out of the wall. Uh, that's why the security guards were then called. So we don't know, we can't understand what happened because there's no audio to that video and we don't see that happen in the video that right. we've been presented with, so. All right, John, thanks. We'll uh, see what happens with that one. She was a high school senior and she was a daughter, sister and a friend. Today marks five years since Maggie Long was murdered. Her killer still has not been caught. Maggie was a senior at Platte Canyon High School. She was found dead in her home. She had stopped there to get some water and cookies to take to a school concert that night. Investigators say she was attacked in the home in Bailey and then the house was set on fire. They believe at least three, maybe four suspects were involved in her death. Last year, the FBI announced it is investigating this as a hate crime. Colorado Bureau of Investigation says they have gotten more than 200 tips in Maggie's case. There is a $75,000 reward being offered for more information that could lead to an arrest. Law enforcement in Colorado can start applying for grants to pay for fentanyl-related death investigations. The state's new fentanyl bill set aside nearly $7 million for this. Boulder County's DA says the money will give law enforcement more tools to investigate deaths as possible homicides. We need to put more effort into education and treatment, as well as ensuring that dealers are held responsible. And that's why this grant funding is so critically important, because we can only hold people responsible if law enforcement is able to catch them. And these resources, this grant funding goes a long way uh, to doing that. Dowdy says that funding will help buy equipment for law enforcement to get into people's phones and computers to try and trace exactly what led to a person's death from fentanyl. They can do that if they have a warrant, of course. Funding will start going out in March. Right now, there are hundreds of homeowners waiting to rebuild after losing their homes in a wildfire. For families who survived the East troublesome fire, it's been more than two years. Last night, the state introduced a new program to help cover some of the cost. People who lost their homes in the disaster since 2018 can apply for grants or loans. Grants meaning that debt could eventually be forgiven and loans meaning you'll have to pay that back. The amount someone qualifies for would depend on their income Income, the traditional loans go up to $50,000. The Department of Local Affairs made it clear that this could help, but it's not going to cover all the gaps. These monies are available to fill a portion of the gap, and that's a that's a sort of a big statement. This these none of the disaster recovery funds are intended to make you whole. Right now, the state wants to focus on low income households first, and this money can only help someone if they lost their primary home, not a second home, vacation home or a short term rental. The state fund was created after a law passed in Colorado this year. They hope to open applications in about two weeks.